none of us had such a difficult year in mind, and we couldn't have. We could not have foreseen a pandemic. We could not have foreseen the extreme political f uh, strife and uncertainty uh, uh, that existed before the, the, the Artsakh uh, conflict and war and, and certainly after. And so you know, one of the things you think about about the future is that there's no one future. There are several alternative futures and you have to be ready for all of them. And so even while you may wanna design and work towards a desirable future, you also have to foresee elements that outside of your control uh, have to be counteracted with, with strategies. And that's really what spurred us to think about the future Armenian project as <clears throat> at least something we could do as a network of Armenians and the diaspora in Armenia to begin to shift the narrative towards not just our present difficulties, which are many, but also to give a voice to the future. Um, I work, as some of you will know, in the world of innovation and entrepreneurship. And innovation and entrepreneurship is all about anticipating a future and making it real. And, and, and that is no less important in developing a country. Uh, and understandably, the, the present makes us forget the future, not only the past, but the future, especially when it's a painful present. But if we are going to forget the future, or at least the possibilities of the future, then I'm afraid we're condemned to the present. And so what, however bad it is, however uh, 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 hopeless it seems in some corners, I would argue that the most valuable thing that the collective can do is to engage in a dialogue about which future and why we choose a future and how can we then work together to achieve it.